It's me, Kayvon, by far the most famous half Persian comedian in the world. Now don't ask why my eyes look like this. That's how Middle Eastern eyes look. I'm not tired, but I have been working harder than Hunter Biden trying to find a massage parlor. This election is right around the corner, and to pick the right candidate, I want to figure out which one is the most insensitive to people with disabilities. Whoever's more anti-handicap will not get my vote. So let's dig in. Now we've all seen Trump make fun of a disabled person, right? Let's take a look. And I watched a general recently on television, and they said to him, what do you think about ISIS? Oh, ISIS is very tough. And I'm saying, first of all, why is a general on television? I don't want my generals on television. Okay, that was him mocking a general, saying he was really dumb. Ugh. Could you please show the correct clip I'm trying to show? The banks now, they can't do anything. They're, they're run by the regulators. In all fairness to the banks, they're run by the regulators. When you see the president of the bank, I mentioned the word regulator. Oh, these guys come in, they run the banks. No, please show the clip where he mocked the disabled person. Do it. Ted's a good debater. I said he is a good debater, but he can't talk, okay? Bad talker. He's a good debater, bad talker. So he's over here. They asked him about waterboarding. They said, Senator Cruz, what do you think of waterboarding? Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about it. You know, he didn't, he didn't want to talk about waterboarding. Cause that was him mocking Ted Cruz saying, Ugh. okay, so you're just telling me that's just what he does? I love what I do, yeah, so I it's no longer work. work. It's not <laughs> like work. I but mean, work to me time. is going on a two week vacation. If somebody that's said you work. have to go away for two weeks, <laughs> there's not going to be any phones. You know what? You get me out of here, right? So that's to me like that would be work. <laughs> okay, that was a mistake. That was him mocking himself on Larry King. Oh. Show the clip of the disabled person, please. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I thought, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. So now you see that that infamous photo was just a cleverly timed screen grab put side by side with the reporter to mislead you. Here's a simple fact. Trump never mocked anyone's disability. The media manipulated you to think Trump mocked a disabled person's disability. That is how Trump always talks. Trump does this motion whenever he talks about someone who's very flustered and doesn't know what they're doing. Whether it's a general, whether it's Ted Cruz, it's Senator Cruz, whether it's himself. So as you can see, Trump is not the best actor in the world. Maybe that's not a good acting job, but that is not mocking someone for being crippled or disabled. He cares about people. Now the media tried to make you angry. Let's meet the reporter in question. Uh, rather circumstantial. Uh, they'll be looking for more um, evidence such as some witness accounts, perhaps further video. Does he look like he's having any difficulties to you? I said it very, very expressively. I would never mock a person that has difficulty. I would never do that. I'm telling you, I would never do it. I would never do it. You see, his voters and fans know that, but the media counted on one simple fact. His haters and you would not. Now we take a little walk down memory lane. How did President Trump treat the disabled before he had anything to politically gain from it? Here's an older clip from around the 1990s. Roll the clip. It's been going well since the show? Yes, it has. And now, wasn't it nice to meet Tiffany? Yes, it because was. Because you could understand and she could understand how you all live your lives. Yeah. Okay. She wasn't the only person who took a special interest in you. <laughs> there was somebody else who saw you. And he's a very famous person. And he wanted to give you a present, too. So watch this in the monitor. I don't know if you know who he is. Hi, Megan. My name's Donald. And you probably don't know me, but I was watching Maury's show the other day. And I must tell you, you really hit me right here. Uh, I think you are so beautiful. And both inside and out, I had a little something, a little gift that I gave to Maury, who's a friend of mine and a very good golfer. Don't ever play him in golf. He's very, very good, believe me. And I gave him a little gift for you, and I hope you and your mother have a good time with it, and you're very special, and you just keep it up and keep up that attitude. So good luck, and you stay in touch. So, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, he has his name on more buildings in New York City than any other person. And besides that, he is one of the most generous people I know. And he wants you and your mom to have a very special check. And, 
And when we talk about Donald Trump, when we, he gives out checks, we're not talking chump change here. This is big time money. So, look at that. Do you know how much that's for? Do you get all those zeros right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you very much. All right. We'll be back right after this. It's really slanderous they would do that to someone with such a long history of reaching out to disabled people. But when they go low, they'll go lower. Trump always does this when he talks about a flustered person. The media took that screenshot, put it next to a journalist who had a disability, and tricked you. This lie was carefully curated by the media in order to get mainstream America, who doesn't have time to dig into these things, to hate the president. It's one of the worst things you can say about someone, right next to racist, rapist, falsely saying they mock disabled people is right at the top. Even Meryl Streep got in on the action when she used her position of privilege and her celebrity to further the lie to the American people so you would vote the way she wanted you to. Despicable. Check it out. There was one performance this year that stunned me. It, it sank its hooks in my heart. Not because it was good. It was, there was nothing good about it. But it was effective and it did its job. It made its intended audience laugh and show their teeth. It was that moment when the person asking to sit in the most respected seat in our country imitated a disabled reporter, someone he outranked in privilege, power, and the capacity to fight back. Now, Meryl Streep is smart enough to know that Trump never mocked someone that was disabled. She looked into the tapes, she saw the video, but she used it in order to manipulate all her fans and the mainstream celebrities. This way they could go out and spread the same lies. It was actually quite a good trick. It's ironic to me because Hollywood has never really had a problem mocking or making fun of disabilities. In fact, that's how they've made most of their money over the last 50 years. If you look at all your favorite shows, Mad TV, In Living Color, all your favorite actors, Ben Stiller, Jim Carrey, Damon Wayans. Thank you. I'll be back. Up, up, and away. Adam Sandler made a billion dollars off of mocking disabled people. Almost any single comedian who's had a chance took a shot at people with disabilities. Democrats have always used political campaigns and jokes to mock the disabled. Look at this commercial mocking Paul Ryan. And even Barack Obama mocked the disabled when he said his bowling skills were about as good as those in the Special Olympics. I, uh, I bowled a 129. <laughs> Very good, Mr. This President. Like, this is like Special Olympics or something. No, that, that, no that's, oh, that's very I'm good, Mr. This President. Is like, this is like Special Olympics or something. No, that, that, no that's very Not good. Not sure why Obama thought that was okay. The kids in the Special Olympics are actually fantastic bowlers and much better than him at basketball, too. Take a look at this young podcaster. She might be deaf, but even she can hear the dog whistle of Democrats who only seem to care about disabilities when it can serve them. If for some reason you don't know, there has been news circulating around since around 2016 of Trump mocking a disabled reporter at one of his rallies. This disabled reporter's name is Serge Kowalski. Also, at the same time, there's a bunch of people saying that he didn't. What's been happening, especially now, is almost every single able person that I knew no, is posting a meme or the gif or an article or whatever of Trump mocking this man on national television and then saying something along the lines of how could you be voting for this guy? This is where the line is drawn for me. None of y'all have given a crap about disabled people except for that one particular moment. Basketball players have a long history of mocking people with disabilities. Check it out. A Madison Heights man getting unwanted attention online from celebrities. We all to some degree know what it feels like to be different, but Jamel Binion knows that feeling better than most. I bore with a rare disorder it's called ectodermal dysplasia. It keeps him from sweating, his hair from growing, and his teeth from fully forming. Like, I've been getting keys since I was like gay tall. But a lifetime of bullying could not prepare Jamel for this. People was coming to me 
They was telling me, like, yo, you got a picture. Shaq posted a picture with you. The caption, smile today. The unflattering pic on the Shaquille O'Neal Instagram account earned more than 14,000 likes and more than 400 comments. I was kind of hurt. Pumped. <laughs> As you should be. Well, I'm giving you a high five. So messed up. Longtime Democrat Howard Stern has made his whole career off of mocking disabled people, bringing them in for laughs at their expense. Pounds. Okay? Uh -huh. His name is Eric. And you got to hear this guy's voice. Gary said that you couldn't even understand that, that you have to sit in the scale <clears throat> until the bit's over. That didn't work out because his belly was too big. What happened? John the Stutterer. He's unbelievable. Here, I'll play you some of it. As much as you can take. Oh! Um. Well, uh, quite seriously, uh, um. Now, are they all horrible people, or are they just trying to bring levity to tough situations as comedians do? Now, me personally, I like to tease everybody. People with disabilities are part of our society. To not acknowledge them in a comedy show would be to turn your back on them and pretend like they don't exist. Not cool. Society treats disabled people as though they are less than. Say the word. Yeah, you know, I'm disabled. It's okay. Even I made a joke here and there. There's a new culture out there who can get offended first and for other people. And that's the weirdest thing in the world. I had that at a show I did once. There was a blind gentleman in the front row, and I was teasing the blind guy, and he was having a great time. After the show, he said, most people ignore that I'm even there, so thank you for making me feel like a part of it. And that's where his head was at. But during the show, I'm teasing the blind guy, and a woman in the back is like, excuse me, I'm offended. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why are you? Because, don't talk to him anymore. I'm offended for the blind gentleman. I'm like, you're, you're offended for him? He's laughing. <laughs> He's facing the wrong way, but he's laughing. <laughs> and to his credit, this is the best part. I go, do you know her? He goes, I have never seen her a day in my life. <laughs> yes. If anyone ever had a difficulty or disability, the left never had a problem making fun of it as long as they matched their political side. People that have a difficulty I cherish them. These are incredible people, and I just want to put that to rest. I didn't know them. It's possible, probable that I met them somewhere along the line, but I deal with reporters every day. Many of them I never even see. Meanwhile, Trump is loved and honored by millions with disabilities. They come from all over the world just to meet him, shake his hands, even get an autograph. So I was very expressive in saying it, and they said I was mocking him. I Can had a friend tell me Thank you. that if he had a problem, he would call you. Why don't you let that out more? Well, I think the press doesn't really like hearing that, to be honest with you. I mean, I do a lot of things, and, and I don't like to talk about them. But they'd much rather see me, you know, beating someone up than being nice to somebody. You know, it fits the image better for them. And, and I think that's fine. It doesn't matter. But I love to help people. I do. I love helping people. There's nothing better. There's yeah, nothing that makes me feel reward, better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's the image that the press really wants from me. You know, they develop sort of an image for somebody, and that's what they want to go with. Are you offended by people who mock the disabled or mock our veterans? Well, then you should be offended by the left. Now, who is this journalist? To know this, we have to backtrack in time. This is going to be a tough topic because I'm going to go deep. You have to follow me on this. Stay with me now. Trump said he was upset to learn that when the Twin Towers were falling, there were reports of Middle Eastern people chanting in the streets celebrating. A new report says dozens of people in two separate groups in Jersey City celebrated as the Twin Towers fell. The investigation by NJ Advanced Media found multiple witnesses to the separate gatherings on 9-11 that went largely unnoticed amid the unfolding chaos. The left said that was not true, that never happened, that's racist. But this reporter wrote back during 9-11 in the Washington Post that said he noticed people cheering during 9-11. According to the report, a now retired police captain said he cleared a rooftop celebration of around 25 people from an apartment building with a view of the towers. So Trump said, why won't this reporter speak up for me? And the reporter, who has an arm like this that doesn't shake, said, I don't remember writing that. Now remember, Trump had not recently seen the disabled reporter. He just remembered the article. Trump had every right to be upset, but Trump did not go like this to make fun of him. Trump merely went, I don't remember. The media took a screen grab, put it next to his picture, and manipulated you. Written by a nice reporter, now the poor guy. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I thought, oh, maybe that's what I said. 
when you tell the American people that their president might have mocked somebody with a disability in that manner, you are forcing half the country to hate the other half. Because half the country now cannot understand why the other half would vote for someone that would go against something they hold so dear and make fun of someone disabled. It is one of the biggest hoaxes of our generation and it is one of the nastiest things anyone has ever done to another human. More importantly, it is deceitful and treasonous and the media should pay a very stiff price for putting that on us for further dividing the nation and making us hate each other even more. I don't care if I liked the person or didn't and I don't know this person. So now this person is going around saying, I did know him that he reported on me in the 1980s and all of that stuff, right? I don't know him. I really don't know him. Now he's going, well, he knew me and we were on first name. Give me a break. Give me a break. And the problem is he's using what he's got to such a horrible degree. I think it's disgraceful. That what and I think the New York Times, frankly, should give me an apology. I do. I think they should give me. And I'd love to have the apology before they go out of business. I would love that. I would love it. Joe Biden is so inconsiderate that he even worked closely with another Democrat in a wheelchair, but forgot and asked him to stand up at his last event. Uh, uh, Chuck Graham, state senator, is here. Chuck, stand up, Chuck. Let him see you. Oh, God love you. What am I talking about? I tell you what, you're making everybody else stand up, though, pal. Thank you very, very much. I tell you what, stand up for Chuck. Thank you, pal. You can tell I'm new. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. How about stolen valor? Joe Biden is pretending he has a disability, a childhood stutter, but that only came out in the last year thanks to The Atlantic who wrote a piece on it. That is an excuse to cover up the fact that his mental faculties are not firing at the same speed they used to. Gentle man instead of gentlemen. And the nun said, Mr. Biden, what's that word? Did Joe Biden really have a stutter or is he stealing that disability as an excuse? One of the worst things you can do, pretend to have a disability. And uh, so a consequence of that, it brings us back to maybe the fundamental disagreement between Governor Palin and me and Senator McCain and Barack Obama. The Atlantic recently published a powerful piece about your childhood stutter. The author says he was stuttering at age four and he writes after interviewing you, I've been following practically everything he's said for months now. And sometimes what is characterized as a memory lapse is indeed a stutter. Mr. Vice President, do you feel that? I don't think of myself as continuing to stutter. I never, that doesn't cross my mind that I'm stuttering, but apparently people will say occasionally, when I'm tired, I'm gonna go, I'll say, um, uh, uh, and I'll find myself searching for a second. Look, the mistakes I make are mistakes, and some people th think I still stutter. I don't think of myself that way. Now, Joe Biden does not have any disabilities, but he does have an issue with anger. It turns out he has a long history of bullying people. His mom used to go to other girls' houses growing up and shove them, push them, and mock them if they ever bullied her son. My mother stopped. She said, just tell me, did you make fun of my son? Well, I, sister, did you make fun of my son? Well, and my mother said, well, I'll answer it for you. You sure in hell did. And if you ever, ever, ever do that again, I'm going to come back and I'm going to knock your bonnet right off your head. Do, do we understand each other? If that's how Joe was raised by his parents, it's no wonder his anger issues have persisted in his later years. He learned the anger from his mother and he keeps doing it. Look how he treats voters. The first surprise is that Biden told Fallon to vote for someone else. I did not expect to be told to leave, to go vote for somebody else. And then he presses on Fallon's chest, pokes him with a finger, and finally grabs his jacket with two hands. It was not appropriate interaction for anybody. I mean, if I'd done that to him, the security would have been all over me. Union workers that are gun enthusiasts, and you are actively trying to diminish our Second Amendment right and take away our guns. You're full of shit. All right, thank now, you. Now, no, shush. Shush. 
You need 100 rounds. So when you were in Beto, no, when you said you're going to take our guns, that I did not blood. say that. That's yeah. not true. I Thank did you. not say that. It's a viral video. It's a viral video like the other ones are putting out that are simply it was a your, lie. Your voice, you said that you're taking the gun. Well, no, he Beto. just clarified it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hey, take your AR, your AR-14s. Okay, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hey, let's you get the same thing There's a lot of guys. A lot of guys wanted. I'm not working. Give me a break, man. Don't be such a worry about it. Hey, there's a lot of guys. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, look, here's the deal. It's always a take you outside and beat you up. I'll put my finger in your chest. I'll show you. The press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish you were in high school. I could take him behind the gym. See for yourself how he looks down on people with obesity issues. Biden called the voter, quote, a damn liar. It began when the voters were asking Biden about his son Hunter's role in Ukraine. But you, on the other hand, thanks your son over there to get a job and work for a gas company that... He had no experience with gas or nothing in order to get access for the president. So you're you're selling access to the president just like he was. So you're a damn liar, man. That's not true. And no one has ever said that. No one has heard that. I no. see it on the TV. You see it on the TV. No, I know you do. And by the way, that's why I, I'm not sedentary. I don't. I get up and and, and no, let, 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 let him go. Let him go. Look, the reason I'm running is because I've been around a long time and I know more than most people know. And I can get things done. That's why I'm running. And you want to check my shape on, let's do push-ups together here, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. Let's get my pizza. Number one. Number two. Number two. No one has said my son has done anything wrong. And I did not on any occasion. And no one has ever said it. Not I didn't one. Didn't say you were doing anything wrong. I you said, said I set up my son to work in an oil company. Didn't know what you said. I Get your word straight, Jack. That's what I we, we hear on the on MSNBC. All you time. don't hear that on MSNBC. <laughs> you did not hear that at all. What you heard? Look. Okay, I'm not going to get in an argument with you, man. No, I don't want to. Well, yeah, you do. But, uh, but look, fat. Look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. It looks, it looks like you don't have any more backbone than Trump does. That was classic Joe Biden in a lot of ways. It, I feel like it was a little bit of like Joe Biden Mad Libs, like challenging him to push ups and saying mm -hmm. well, IQ tests and whatnot. He is going to have to have an answer to the question about his son. Yeah. So, who wins in the disability face off? Sorry, Joe, it goes to Trump. Now, me personally, like I said, I think people should be allowed to make jokes and bring levity to otherwise difficult situations. But if you were so offended by Trump mocking a disabled person, which we just debunked, then you should also not vote for Biden. Therefore, stay home on November 3rd. Don't mail in your ballot. We wouldn't want you to accidentally vote for someone who is rude to the disabled. The rest of us will probably be voting for Trump because we have just exposed one of the biggest media hoaxes of our time. And they need to be punished for falsely saying one of the worst things things you can say about another human being. Forcing our country to be divided and half the nation to hate the other half. That's just treason. Do you agree with me? Go ahead and argue about it in the comments. Call each other racist. We love to see that. And let me know who you're voting for. My name is Kayvon. I hope you enjoyed my video. I have 500 more on youtube.com slash Comedy. Or subscribe on my website, Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, Bumble, Craigslist. Just find me online, KVON Comedy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe out there.